It is totally awesome. Fishing rig time again. Now then, off the shore fishing, especially during the summer in the UK, there's a method that you don't really see that much. Everybody wants to get a big lead and bait, let's throw it out, your bait is on the bottom. Now when you're fishing from, let's say, rocks, headlands, piers, jetties, that type of thing, you've got pretty well deep water close to you anyway. So what about also if it's snaggy on the bottom? Nobody likes to keep losing all their gear, do they? There's nothing worse than tackling up. You're wasting good fishing time. Not to mention, it's expensive. Have you ever thought about using one of these? A float. Now, you can get a huge variety of different, what they call sliding float rigs, and that's what I'm gonna show you now, which suspends your boat above the bottom, but in deep water. So this slides up the line until it comes to a stop knot. You can put that stop knot at whichever depth you want, to set it so that your bait is just waving around at whatever depth you want. Could be for garfish, mackerel, let's say three feet, four feet, something like that. The bait could be sandal, ragworm, lugworm, a belly strip of bait. It could be pretty well a strip of squid, anything you fancy using. But the fact that that is suspended in a totally different area than the seabed, you're gonna get different species. You're gonna get maybe coalfish, you might get pollock, you might get bass. Whereas on the bottom, you're more limited a, because your bait could be covered, couldn't it, in amongst weed, rocks, boulders. You know, I hate it when, you, when you're fishing and never really sure, is that bait clear? Mm. You give it a little bump just to see if it's on nice clean sand, clean gravel, and boom, it's in a snag. It's a horrible feeling, and of course, you don't catch any fish. So, let's check out the floats. This is going to be a sliding float rig. Okay, now... Let's call this, this is really a pipe fishing float for fresh water, but it's what I call fixed. If I show you, you have a center spine there, there's the float. Now you can use these, but you're gonna be stuck with whatever depth the length of your rod is. So if you've got a 10 foot rod, you probably won't be able to cast very far uh, or go much deeper than 10 feet. So you thread your line through the center core of the float and then you put the peg in, which holds it, pinches the line like that, and you can see that is a fixed one. It's fixed onto the line. You can slide it up and down quite stiff, shouldn't damage the line, but you're limited to the length of your rod for casting out. Whereas with a sliding float, it's totally different. You can set it at whatever depth you want. A sliding float has a hole at the top and the bottom. I've got a variety of different ones here. These are for salmon fishing. In British Columbia, we use these for fishing for salmon. Uh, there's a big tube goes through some polystyrene and it's been painted on the top. How simple, how easy is that? And then you put what shot you want on the bottom. A traditional sea float will be this shape. Yes, it's big and it's bulky. That's because it's going to be windy, there's going to be waves. You're going to have to cast out with a decent bit of lead. Or you can get, OMG, a lunker of a float, which will take a very big lead probably three, four ounces, something like that, enabling you to cast a lot further out. So it's more the size of the float to the distance you want to cast rather than the fish you're going to catch. You know, basically they'll both fish a bait at let's say 15, 20 feet, 25 feet deep. No difference. This will take more lead. Uh, this one will take more lead. This will take less lead, therefore limiting your casting. Okay, let's just tie a loop of line here. This is going to be my pretend fishing rod. So here's my, what can I hook it on? Let's hook it up there over that roller ring. So here is the line from my rod top, okay? So all you need to do is I'm going to use this one because it's smaller. I'm going to thread the line through the central tube of the float like that. It comes out the other end, okay? And then I'm going to slide my lead on. It can be a ball lead, a bullet lead, generally a cylinder shaped one. You can make your own like this out of a fold or wrap of lead. Look, this one just, I just, you, I just cut up what we call strip lead, sheet lead. There, and that's just sliding up and down. You can see that there, that's sliding up and down. Or you can get, these ones are American, they're really good. I used to bring them back from Florida all the time. We want to bring them back now with all the regulations, they look like bullets, didn't they? But they're called egg sinkers. That one will probably be just about right for that float. So it slides up and down like this, onto the end of that, you quite simply tie your swivel. Now I'm using pretty big line here, just so I'm hoping that you'll be able to see how it works. 
you can use your real line would say 15 pounds 15 18 20 pound line don't really think you want to go to 30 pound line off the shore there's not much swimming around the uk that float fishing you won't land on 15 pound line so there we are you can see that there hopefully that's the basic rig there so sliding float okay there the leads also slides comes up against the swivel there now you have to put on your trace what can i use for a piece of trace line trace line trace line I'm trying to find something that's a bit a bit bright i haven't really got anything that's uh, anywhere near bright oh yes i have to use it it's blue you'll be able to see this now your trace line for float fishing you'll be looking at in the uk various different sized basically small fish up to let's say if you go for pollock 10 pounds that's what i'm going to say i make it about three about four feet long so tie the start of your trace could be anything can be 10 pound line if you're going for small fish mackerel or something like that i'm just using this is 50 pound in blue because i think it, it might stand out for the camera a little bit more so tie that on the knot of your choice teeth knot supply please use your own okay so there's my trace also, I find if you do this and it's come off the coil, it's got, it just gets rid of the memory. It just heats it up. Don't burn your fingers. It heats it up. Stretch it or, or indeed what we used to do, tarpon fishing with the leaders. Just hold it for like five, six, seven, and look. It was nice and limp. Now, depending on which country you're in, you can use big baits, live baits, wire traces, whatever you want, whatever species you're going for. Here in the UK, I'm talking about, let's say, if there's youngsters or there's families who want to go float fishing, it's a really entertaining way. It's quite productive in the summer months for, let's say, mackerel and garfish. I'm using like a size one hook here. This is a one. Ordinary blood. Not to show you. As I say, depending on what species you're going for, you might want to change that. So that is the rig. Simple as it sounds. Sliding float, weight, swivel, trace here your trace there hook bait keep your baits nice and straight if it's a worm thread it round you might want to get some elasticated thread just bind it up here if you use sand you'll keep them straight try and keep everything in a straight line not bent around the bend of the hook because if it's washing and moving around it will spin and look unnatural you want it, everything hanging as straight as possible even if you had say a ragworm and you've got a bit of tail hanging down hand straight don't feed it all around the hook and let it slide down in a big gobby mess it's not so good this is a very good method for bait fishing with live baits as well if you're going bass fishing. But of course you ask yourself, well how does that float stop? Now to stop that up here, you could use a small rubber band tied on there, which you can slide up and down, or you can use you know, a little, it's called a stop knot up here. I'll show you how we do it. Okay, so here's a float. I'm gonna put my stop knot, let's just say on here, and for that, you just make a loop of line. I'm going to use this thick yellow line, which you might be able to see. I don't know. It's always tricky doing it. If I come into about there. So I'll make a short piece and a long piece and a loop up there. That's the way I do it anyway. I just pinch in there and go around all three lengths of line. That's the, the two sides of the loop here and my actual real line. About four turns. Now this is going to be really hard to do because it's like 80 pound yellow line. I might not be able to do this in this thicker line, but I wanted to do it so you can see it. Then you put your longer tag in through the loop of the line that you've made like that. And then pull down on the, sh on the short tag end here. I'm going to have to use my teeth somewhere. Hang on guys, you can skip the principle of it. Let me just do this with my teeth. I love it. Where will we be without teeth? Right, there you can see. Hopefully it's a knot. Now you can leave two tag ends, and you do indeed need to leave a tag end sticking up here. About like that, because it's got to go through the rod rings, don't forget. And a tag end sticking up here. Now I'm using a very thick line here. So if you use light line, I'm doing this to accentuate it so you can see it. On the camera now you can see when the float hits the water let's pull this camera back a bit right so what you do is you bait it up you cast out as far as you can go the bait goes down the lead will then pull this line right the way through it's going to sink like this the lead here 
pulling in the line, pulling in the line, pulling in the line, until, if you watch, it comes up against the stop knot. That is your predetermined depth. You can set this at what you want. Now to move it on light line, if you pull this really, really tight, you'll find you can hardly move it. You only want it, it's only there just to stop the weight of that float, so you don't need to really bite it down tight. But if you do want to move it, my suggestion, if you want to go deeper, bit of spit on the line, right, get your thumb now, look, slides easily, and it doesn't damage the line. And then the float is here, is reset, comes up against that stop there, zzz, click, okay? Now listen, I've got a really big knot there, if you've got a regular small, say 15 pound line, I use my real line to tie the stop knot, it could go back through there, go back through the float and just pop through and come out the other way and then you just, it's going and you sink down to the bottom of the snag. So what you can do if you've got a float like this with a big giant diameter that the stop knot, knot might go through, I'll just snip this off quickly and show you, you just put a bead on there and then the bead actually comes up against the top of the float, and then the knot comes up against the bead. Spin this off quickly. So if you've got a float with a big diameter hole, get a little plastic bead like this. Plastic bead goes up first, then the float. Same, exactly the same way I showed you before. Float goes on, there we go. Then we go the weight, whichever weight you want to use. A ball weight, drill bullets are pretty good. Then you swivel to your trace. Probably this would be described as the more traditional way of doing it with a B because some of the C floats do have a really big diameter hole for the line to go through because, you know, some people do use quite thick lines. So there you can see, let's just slide this down so you can see it a bit better. <clears throat> About there. Obviously, let's say this stop knot will be at 15 feet, 20 feet, whatever you want, and that little knot. Okay, on smaller line, we'll go through your rug rings, round your reel, you can cast out, no problems. Hopefully no problems. There's never, it's never no problems with sea fishing. Okay, so you can see there, look, there's my bead on top of the float. And there, when that slides up, it pushes the bead up as well like this. It comes up against the stop knot, and the knot won't go there. It can't go through the bead. The bead stays on the top of the float like that. So there you go guys, a sliding float rig can be very good in the summer around the UK from deep water. If you're out off piers, uh, jetties, rocky headlands, kids, youngsters, don't go alone. Go with your parents, go with an adult, stay safe out there. Just be aware of the waves coming in around rocks. Every year somebody loses their life, especially on the north coast of Cornwall, north coast of Devon. There's nearly always something, that gets, you know, people get washed off the rocks by the big swirl that comes in off the Atlantic because we have a southwesterly approaching sea. The swirl normally, normally comes up, they get a road wave, fishing away, whoosh, they're in with the fish. Be careful. Sliding float rig, guys. Hope you enjoy it. Get out there. It's great fun watching this bob around in the sea. And I'll tell you what, these things catch fish as well as fishermen. Don't neglect them.